So today was the final day of Packers minicamp. It was also the final time that we will see the Packers until training camp comes around. Basically six weeks of probably no updates, at least when it comes to on the field. So this will be the final update until training camp when it comes to seeing players at practice because it's sort of that dead time for the next six weeks or so until we finally have some more news coming in, which will be fun. This season will be almost here as training camp does start uh, in late July. But I want to cover the final practice. It's sort of sad that it's final practice but luckily it means we're getting closer to the season. But Bill Huber of Sports Illustrated shared an article later this afternoon, and I want to basically summarize his biggest takeaways from being at Packers practice today. If you guys are new here, I put out Packers content pretty much every single day. I also have a Packers newsletter. If you'd like to receive that in your inbox, I write a few times a week. You can click the link down below and enter your email, and you'll get everything I write about the Packers. So first off here, according to Bill Huber, Cornerback Keyshawn Nixon was the player of the day. Keyshawn Nixon is primarily slot player. Obviously had a big year returning kickoffs last season. But with Eric Stokes still not back from his ankle injury he suffered last season, Keyshawn Nixon has been getting a majority of snaps in the slot. Maybe when Eric Stokes come back, comes back, Rasul Douglas kicks inside. But we're not exactly sure. We'll have to keep an eye on that one. And then when it comes to Jordan Love in practice today, in the first 7-on-7 seven seven period, uh, and it was not 11-on-11. 11 11. Today, the Packers did know 11-on-11 11 because 11, um, that was Matt LaFleur's decision. But in the first 7-on-7 seven seven period, Love went 4-of-6. of six. And then during the 2-minute period, Love went 4-of-6. of six. He apparently threw one pick to Jair Alexander. So um, we've seen, as I said yesterday as well, some ups and downs from Jordan Love, making some nice plays, making some ni- not-so-nice plays. And overall, according to Bill Huber, in the five open practices that reporters were allowed to be at, in this offseason, Love went 50 for 84, so about a 59.5% completion percentage. And then moving on, outside linebacker Jonathan Garvin practiced today. He is one of the players who did not show up for voluntary OTAs. He, I'd say he's one of the only players who maybe has less of a solidified role on the team to not show up. Of course, Jair didn't show, Rasul Douglas didn't show, but he was there. Jonathan Garvin was there today at practice. And then apparently safety Tarvarius Moore and long snapper Matt Orzak didn't practice today and they had excused absences according to LaFleur. Not sure what that is. Injuries for today. Guys who were not practicing. Eric Stokes, we know his ankle injury still hasn't healed. Dallin Levitt, not sure what's going on there. Rashawn Gary, still trying to recover from his ACL tear last season. Offensive lineman Jake Hansen, tight end Tyler Davis, first year receiver Grant DuBose, and then defensive lineman Chris Slayton. And according to Bill Huber, Darnell Savage and Rudy Ford got first team reps at safety for majority of the offseason with Adrian Amos gone. Rudy Ford's likely going to step into Amos's role. That's sort of what I think. And from seeing what, what's happened so far at Packers practice, he has gotten those reps with Darnell Savage. And apparently Jonathan Owens, who the Packers signed from the Texans, has also gotten some snaps in there with the first team as well. And so I think that when you look at the Packers safety room, there is some um, competition going on there with Tarverius Moore from the 49ers from with... Jonathan Owens from the Texans. Those guys will likely be, you know, backing up Rudy Ford potentially and Darnell Savage. So we'll watch that competition throughout the rest of the offseason. And then Anders Carlson, Packers rookie kicker today with six of six kicking, which is great to hear. You love when your kickers don't miss a single kick. And then the offensive line today, starting O-line, David Bottieri, Elton Jenkins, Josh Myers, John Runyon, and Josh Nyman. So yesterday, it was Zach Tomlin right tackle. Today, it's Josh Nyman. And as I said, if you watched my video yesterday, right tackle has really been the one position that is sort of up in the air right now. It's sort of flipping back and forth between Josh Nyman and Zach Tom, but everything else seems to be pretty solidified up front. And then when it comes to nickel defense on first down, according to Huber, Kenny Clark and TJ Slayton have been the two interior defensive linemen, not Devontae Wyatt. And apparently first rounder Lucas Van Ness has getting most of his work with the third unit. I would assume as time goes by, as training camp comes around and he gets more acclimated to the Packers defense that will see him potentially push for those starter snaps, I would assume. And then finally here at outside linebacker, different groups that have been playing together, Preston Smith and Justin Hollins. Hollins was on the Rams last season and the Packers signed him late this year. And now he's here and he's gotten a good amount of snaps um, with Preston Smith. And then Kinsley and Ibarra and Ladarius Hamilton also have been playing together. And then Van Ness and undrafted free agent Keyshawn Banks. So when it comes to the Packers outside linebacker group, as we've discussed on this channel, with Rashawn Gary still not healthy, we don't know when he'll be back. Hopefully he's back week one, but chances are there's a chance he's not back week one. If that happens, it'll be inter- interesting to see who sort of fills in with Gary gone. I assumed it would be Van Ness. 
He has been getting work with a third team, but I assume that by the time the season comes around, he'll have worked his way in there just because I think he's too... I mean, the Packers invested way too much in him to not play him even in his first season, number 13 overall. Plus, from the videos that I've seen from on Twitter floating around from practice, he looks insanely explosive, insanely fast, and I hope to see him out there if Gary isn't ready to go when the season starts. But that's pretty much it for today. If you want to see my newsletter from earlier today, click the link down below. And if you would like to receive more going forward in the future, feel free to click the link down below, enter your email, and you'll receive all of that. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.